bless you for he endureth forever. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord again. Bethlehem, we are blessed to see 97 years of service. Amen. 97 years is a long time to be doing anything. But you might as well be doing kingdom work. Amen. What a joy it is uh, to be in service for so many years. A lot of folks that got saved right here at this church. And we ought to give God praise. For that alone. A lot of folks been saved and baptized and accepted their calling and been turned over, turned their life over to Christ. And it's a great thing to celebrate 97 years of saving and changing lives. And you ought to thank God for that. Amen. My hat goes off to our founding uh, uh, founding members who have uh, stepped, stepped out on faith and launched this great vision over 97 years ago. And I can't help but wonder if they are pleased with where we are today. What a joy. And we thank God the legacy and the ministry that they have began amen and i'm believing god for 97 more years and some amen a lot of great fruit has come from this church amen i said a lot of great fruit has come from this church. greenville texas would not be what it is if it were not for the bethlehem missionary baptist church Amen. We have birthed ministries. We have birthed ideas. We have birthed preachers. We have been church home to many, and we have been envied by many and loved by many. But either way, we give God praise. Amen. 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 We thank God for all of you who have assembled here today to come back and celebrate what God has done and what God is currently doing. We thank God for all of those of you who have worked uh, so hard and tirelessly uh, to make this day possible. Um, and with all the pandemic and all the stuff that's been going on, it's just been tough around here. Amen. We, we've lost some loved ones here, but God is yet able and still good. Yes, he is. He is still good. He is still good. And so we thank God for all of you who have come here near and far to celebrate 97 years of service. Now, I'm going to, um, we have, we, we want you to, uh, I'm going to say a couple things before we move on. First thing, I want to make sure that today you are liberal in your giving. I want you to sow a major seed into the life of our church. We've got a lot of great ministry going forward here, and we need, uh, y'all know it takes money to do ministry. Uh, if you thought it didn't, then you, you know, juice, juice don't operate on your prayers. They operate on your money. Amen. So if you wouldn't pray about your electric bill and don't pay, then don't just pray about ministry up here and don't bring your, your offering. Amen. So we want you to sow a seed uh, into our church today. We're going to do that towards the end of service. Uh, this is how we give. So we don't have a lot of congestion going on up here. And I'm really, really in a hurry to hear the word. There are not too many preachers I get geared up and excited to hear. But uh, this great man of God that is coming today, I am so excited to hear from him. Age to praise, get ready, because y'all finna dance now. Uh, so while they're preparing, I want to introduce the speaker. And then after uh, they come, uh, we will hear the word of the Lord. So I, I want you to know, um, as I stated earlier, Bethlehem has given birth to a lot of things. Bethlehem is a birthing place. That's the call on the life of our church. We give birth to things that go on and do great things. And we want, one of our products of our church is the Pastor Andre Williams. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He from right here. <laughs> Am I right about it? He from right here. <laughs> Amen. And listen, I can tell he from right here because he knows how to rightly divide the word of God. I don't have too much respect for a preacher that mount this pulpit that don't know how to rightly divide it can 
hoop holler and talk and ain't said nothing, said a whole lot of hollering and ain't said nothing. But this man of God has some substance. And if you have never heard him preach, listen, you are in for a ride of your life. Amen. I am so ready to hear from this man of God. Love and faith, let me be clear. You are richly blessed. You are richly blessed. You are richly, richly blessed. He is unapologetically a preacher. He don't cut no corners. He going to tell you what it is and what it ain't. And it's up to you what you do with it. So Bethlehem, I also want to help. I want you to help me celebrate our guests. Loving Faith, good to have y'all back here at the Bread House again. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Amen. Now we're going to get out of the way for a second. And uh, Ace to Praise is going to come and dance, uh, minister us and dance. And so uh, at this time, we'll hear from them. And the next voice you'll hear after them will be our speaker for the hour Pastor Andre Williams. Bishop Brown wrote this song for me. Hallelujah. 
Come on, put them hands together for Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Come on, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who heals all our sickness and forgive all of our iniquities, who redeems our life from destruction and crowns us with loving kindness, Somebody in this house, give God your best praise. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to make a decision right here, and I'm going to rejoice in it. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. You are great and greatly to be praised. There is none like you, none above you. You are El Elyon. You are the most high.
high God. You are all powerful God. You are full of love and compassion. And God, I just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He really, he really better than that. Amen. He's really better than what we gave him, but we gave him what we gave him. Hallelujah. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, who loves us with an everlasting love and from his son, Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. The scripture said he gave his life as a ransom for many. And I thank God for the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give respect, amen, to my great friend, the pastor, God's chosen anointed servant leader of the bread house, to all his ministerial staff, the deacon board, amen, to all the members of this great congregation, to love and faith. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. As my brother Norris Nelson I always say, one more time. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord, amen, amongst people of like faith. And, and I just want to tell somebody, God been really, really good to Andre. Can I just say that? I mean, I, mean, I know he been good to you, but it's personal, you know what I mean? So God been really, 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 really good to Andre. And I just thank him, amen, for allowing me the privilege and honor to be on his program. Those of you who God use in whatever capacity God use you in, it's a great joy just to be used by God, isn't it? Amen. Isn't it a great joy to be used by God? Amen. 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 We are celebrating 97 years of service. Amen. For the Bethlehem Baptist Church ministry. It has impacted so many people's lives. Amen, amen. I, I personally can't thank God enough for this ministry, how he touched my life and transformed my life from the inside out right here through this ministry. I just want to appreciate all those who have gone before us, amen, all those great, the great pastors we have had here, amen, the great associate ministers and deacons and mothers of the church, amen, they meant, they meant so much to me, amen, and, and I just think about Sister T, boy, Sister T said, it ain't no, I want you to look good when you get up there, Sister T, <laughs> amen, 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 I, I thank God for all of them, amen, and Especially, amen, again, for Pastor Johnson for having me, man, allowing me to come into your pulpit, amen, and to break the bread of life. We do have a word from the Lord, amen. I, I, I want to go to three places just to, just to paint a picture to you, so don't get nervous because I'm going to three different places. I'm not going to be here all day, amen. In the gospel according to John, John 19, verse 17 and 18. Then I'll go to Matthew 27, 45 and 46. Back to John 19 and 30. Amen? Amen. John, the gospel according to John, chapter 19, verse number 30. If you would... Chapter 19, verse 17 and 18. If you will stand for the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Look at somebody and say, this is the Holy Scripture. Holy Scripture. John 19, beginning at verse 17. They took Jesus, therefore, and he went out, burned the cross for himself unto the place called the place of the skull, which is in Hebrew, Galgotha, where they crucified him with two others on either side, and Jesus in the center. Matthew 27. Verse 45 and 46. Verse 45. 
Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? One more. Back to John 19 and 30. Somebody can already see the picture where we're going. Amen. John 19 verse 30. Y'all have that say amen. amen. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. I want to use for thought this morning. What really happened at the cross? What really happened at the cross? Gracious, eternal God, our Father, we, your sons and daughters, come into the throne room of love in the name of Jesus. We enter into your holy presence by the precious blood of the Lamb. We come this morning, Father God, with thanksgiving and praise. For if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough for the person and finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning, Father, that you, for you have loved us with an everlasting and unfailing love. We thank you that your mercy is new every morning, Holy Father. Father, we thank you today, Father, for the precious, indescribable gift of the Holy Spirit who dwells in our hearts forever. And I just want to thank you for your anointed word. It is a alive and full of power. You have declared that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of your mouth. We declare by faith that your word is making an impact on how we think and what we say and what we do, Father God. We thank you right now that your word truly is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you this morning for giving us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And, and Father, I acknowledge that I am not sufficient in myself, but my sufficiency is in you who have made me a minister of the new covenant and anointed me with the Holy Spirit and with power. We thank you, Father, that your word that goes forth, it shall never return to you void. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray that all God's children say amen. What really happened at the cross? The meaning of, cro of the cross is death. The cross was an instrument of execution that resulted in death in the most painful way. Crucifixion was the method the Romans used to carry out the death penalty. Death on the cross was shameful and humiliating. The one condemned to death on the cross was first beaten with a whip, and then the near-naked victim was forced to carry the crossbar to the place of his death. Make no mistake about it. The cross stands for death. Over 2,000 years ago, on Golgotha's hill, there were three men that hung there on the cross. For those onlookers, it appeared to be just another execution. However, the one in the center was not just an ordinary man. The Roman soldier caught a glimpse of his true identity when he said, surely this must be the son of God. Amen. We need to understand that the one in the center was Emmanuel. He was God with us. Amen. The cross, somebody say the cross. The cross is the key to all of God's blessings for fallen humanity. John the Baptist knew that this day was coming when he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. When John greeted Jesus as the Lamb of God, it was a declaration of his destiny. It pointed to the cross. Somebody say, what really happened at the cross? 
The purpose of Jesus coming to planet earth, it was not to live but to die. Understand that man's greatest problem is sin. It's a problem that he himself cannot solve. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how good you look. You cannot solve, a man cannot solve the sin problem. Sin takes life. So a life is required to pay sin's death. Paul said it like this in Romans 6 and 23. He said the wages of sin is death. There is absolutely nothing that man can do, Pastor Johnson, to pay for his own sins. Sinners need a savior. Say it again, Andre. Sinners need a savior. What really happened at the cross? At the cross, the Lamb of God was sacrificed for the sins of the world. The scripture says in 1 John 3 and 5 that he was manifested to take away our sins. What does, what does take away mean? It means to bear away, to carry off. It means to remove from the scene. In other words, at the cross, the Lamb of God was crucified to take away our sin. Somebody should have got up and shouted right there. When you understand that Jesus went to the cross and the Bible said through the sacrifice of himself, he put away our sin. Jesus, the son of God, solved the sin problem at the cross. I have a problem with these pastors and preachers and teachers that point more to sin than they do Jesus. as if Jesus didn't come down to earth and deal with the sin problem. Amen. Jesus' death on the cross, from divine justice standpoint, he solved the sin problem. Come on, somebody. I wish I had a witness in here. Look at somebody say, it happened at the cross. Jesus took away our sin. Jesus was crucified. He solved the sin problem through his death on the cross. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Somebody in here ain't getting happy about that. Can I tell you, sin is at the root of every issue man has in life. Sin is at the root of racism. Come on, somebody. Sin is at the root of poverty, sickness, and disease. And when Jesus went to the cross, he dealt with the sin issue. What really happened at the cross? The Old Testament sacrifices of bulls and goats covered sin, but they could not take away sin. But at the, at the cross, the Lamb of God bore away our sins with the result that God would never ever remember our sin or hold our sin against us. Boy, that's something to shout about. You mean to tell me, Andre, that if I as a believer commit an act of sin, that God would not hold it against me. That's just what I say. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because the scripture says in Hebrews 8 and 12, God said, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. In their sins and lawless deeds, I will remember no more. That means every failure, every shortcoming, all the issues that I have, God said, I will not remember it anymore. I said, well, Lord, what happened? Did you suddenly have, do you suddenly have amnesia? He said, no, as, as, it don't mean that I forgot what you did, but what it do mean I don't hold it against you. It happened at the cross. Somebody say at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received. And right now, I'm happy. <laughs> 
can't see. Ain't nobody happy up in here. Sitting over there looking like you like you got it all together. When the truth is, we all building under construction. Thank God that at, at the cross, Jesus took away our sin. What really happened at the cross? At the cross, our redemption was secured. Redemption is humanity's greatest need. Every man, woman, boy, or girl born since Adam is in need of redemption. Somebody say, preacher, I, I, I don't understand some of that, those preacher words, those Bible words. What does redemption mean? I'm glad you asked. Watch this. It means to loosen what is bound. It means to set a slave free on the basis of a price being paid. So redemption is a price paid for a slave who is then set free by the one that paid the price. Redemption is man's greatest need. All human beings had been held captive to sin. Sin is an evil tyrant, a slave master, if you will. Jesus said it like this, he who commits sin is a slave of sin. I see two things in here, Pastor. I either see former slaves or slaves. Former slaves are those who were slaves but been redeemed by a price. And those who are slaves mean that you haven't put your trust in the Redeemer. Let the redeemed of the Lord. You need to say something right there. You need to say something right there. If God has redeemed you, if Jesus has paid the price in order to set you free, you need to open your mouth and say something. That's why some of us still stuck in our situation. We ain't saying nothing. The Bible says, if you have faith, you will say to this man, you better say something. The scripture says in Romans 8 and 31, what shall we say to these things? They ain't got, they ain't got time for no quiet Christians. Believers ought to be confessing their faith in Jesus Christ. We ought to let somebody hear what we got to say. What really happened at the cross? Jesus redeemed us from the penalty and power of sin. Remember, redemption means to loose that which was bound. Woo! And I thought about to tell you, I ain't, I ain't got to talk about you. But I know I was bound and I was held captive and I was a slave to sin, a slave to lust and this desire. And one day, Jesus, he looked. He loo is it anybody here? Watch this. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, in whom? In Christ. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. Watch this. According to the riches of his grace. Good God Almighty. Our redemption is not about anything that we done. It's what Christ did on our behalf. When he shed his blood, that was the price paid to set us free. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. What can wash away my... The blood of Jesus will never... It reaches... Tell your neighbor, I'm just thanking him for the blood right now. I know we celebrate 97 years, but can I just pin that on the wall for a moment and just thank him for the... I 
I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood that saved me. I know it was the blood that set me. He who the Son set free. That's what really happened at the cross. Jesus redeemed us with his precious blood. Hallelujah. He redeemed us and he purchased our freedom from sin's penalty. What is sin's penalty? Death. We've been redeemed from death. That's why the scripture says in Hebrews 9, it said it was not with the blood of bulls and goats, but with his own blood. He went into the Holy of Holies and he obtained for us an eternal redemption. I think I need to say that because once truly saved, eternally saved. If he has obtained for us an eternal redemption from sin, penalty, which is death, that means once you've been born again spiritually, you can never die again. You can never be separated from God again. Pastor, you know what? The Lord showed me, I shared it with the church. He, when he said he have an eternal redemption, he said, son, in order for you to lose your salvation, the blood got to be taken back. Because it was with the blood that he obtained for us. He, look at somebody say, he can't take that back. That blood been shed, he can't take that back. He's already did that. Not only are we redeemed from sin's penalty, but look out, from sin's power as well. See, sin was a master. Y'all know I'm talking about sin, but I always point you to Jesus. Notice that. Sin was a master. And we were slaves at it. As sin said, go get her, we went and got her. As sin said, fire it up, we put a match on it. Come on, somebody. Okay, I ain't been down your avenue. If you was in Walmart and sin said, pick it up and don't pay for it. That's sin's power. But once we put our trust in Jesus Christ, we have been redeemed from sin's power. The scripture said like this, stay in the text. Preacher, in Romans 6 and 14 said, Sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. Where sin did abound, grace abounded much, much. Somebody just said, I'm free in Jesus' name. What really happened at the cross? Let me tell you what else happened. Jesus reconciled us unto God. Romans 5 and 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, watch this, through the death of his son. Listen, Adam's original sin made all his descendants enemies of God. And the thing about it, notice what I said, Adam's original sin made all of us enemies of God. We was born enemies of God. David said it like this, I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I was born, no, I was born telling lies. Come on, I was born with a rebellious spirit. Didn't nobody have to teach me how to rebel against God. I had that nature, I was born that way. I was an enemy of God. But see, that's not God's original plan. God created you and I to live in his presence, to enjoy, to enjoy his presence. But when Adam sinned, there was a disruption in the relationship. So what does it mean to be reconciled through the death of his son? To reconcile means to reestablish. It means to restore 
a relationship that has been previously interrupted. This is the one I like, Pastor Johnson. To reconcile means to make things right. At the cross, Jesus made things right between God and man. He restored the relationship that had been interrupted by Adam's sin. See, you got to understand what it means to be in a relationship with God. Because in him, I have peace. In him, I have joy. In him, I have love. In him, I have all of my needs met. In him, by his stripes, I'm healed. So when he reconciled me to God, he restored all that Adam lost through his disobedience. Thank God for reconciliation. Reconciliation. It describes the reestablishing of a relationship that has been broken. Okay, put it in turn where everybody can understand. You ever had a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife? Most of us have. If, if you a girl and you got a girlfriend, I ain't talking to you. If you a dude and you got a boyfriend, I ain't talking to you. But I'm saying if you a man and a woman, a boy and a girl, and you've ever had a relationship and something happened where y'all that's disrupted your relationship. That means, you know, I, you, I normally call you every night, but I ain't calling you tonight. Because we got an interruption in the relationship. Okay, put it in today's turn. I normally send you a good night text, but not tonight. There's a disruption in the relationship. So what happens is, the thing that disrupted relationship, Minister Barr, has to be removed in order to reestablish the relationship. See, Adam's sin had to be removed in order to reconcile. It happened at the cross. Jesus removed the, the thing that had interrupted our relationship. He reconciled us to God. He made things right between man and God. The, through the cross, through his death, Jesus reestablished the relationship. Why is it so important to know the things that we're talking about? Because for the normal Christian, at the cross he died. He paid for my sin, but it's so much more happened. See, at the cross, he redeemed us. See, at the cross, he put away our sin. See, at the cross, he reconciled us to God. These are the things that happen at the cross. And when you know these things, the enemy can't defeat you in your Christian life. Watch this. The scripture says, for lack of knowledge. He said, my people. He didn't just say people perish. He said, my people, they perish for lack of knowledge. I, I got to do, Pastor, I know you're a teacher, so I know you don't mind. Lack of knowledge of what? Well, 2 Peter 3 and 18 says, it says, and grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Son of God. That means the more knowledge I receive and get about Jesus, who he, who he is, what he have accomplished on my behalf. I'm growing spiritually and I'm reigning in life. Some of, some of us Christians are all tired of be being defeated. Could it be, perhaps, maybe, it's your lack of knowledge of what Jesus have done for you that's causing the enemy to destroy you. What really happened at the cross? Hebrews 9 and 22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. What does remission mean? It means to release from bondage. It means letting them go as, as if they never have been committed. You remember on the night of Passover, when Jesus was celebrating the Passover with his disciples, they was eating the Passover meal. 
And he rose up from the table. And he took the bread and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Then he said something else. He said, this cup represents the blood of the new covenant. Watch this. Which is shed for the remission of your sins. Remission means a release of letting them go. At the cross, Jesus shed his blood for the remission of our sin. That means that our sin dead pastor has been counseled. It's been paid in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for what took place at the cross. Remission of sin, what that mean? Watch this. It means once and for all, taking them away. Do you know that right here, as I now stand in God's presence, bam, I stand as though I've never seen before. It's not because I've never seen before. It's because I have remission of my sin. That means Jesus has once sin for all, taking them away, past, present, and future. That's why Satan can't put no can't, can't come to me, sister boy, and put condemnation on me. See what I'm saying? Condemnation, when he says there is therefore now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. See, condemnation is for those who don't always get it right. No condemnation, I mean. It's for those who don't already get it right. Because if you're getting it right all the time, you don't feel no condemnation. You don't sense no condemnation. But ain't nobody here in the room like that. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me. I ain't got nobody spying you. I know. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is. <laughs> but those who are in Christ realize that at the cross, his blood was shed for the remission of our sin. The obligation for our debt has been paid in full. Once you pay off a debt, you can't pay nothing else on it. Here's what the religious world do. They think they paying for their sin debt by giving their tithe every Sunday. Well, you know I come to Sunday school and I attend church and I read my Bible faithfully. But none of those things can pay for your sin debt. The text says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. No, don't, get, don't get it twisted. I'm better because of Jesus. Amen. I'm on the right road because of Jesus. But no, I ain't arrived yet. He that's begun a good work in me, he going to complete it until the day Jesus returns. Thank God that at the cross we receive remission for our sin. In the text it says in Matthew 27, 46, while Jesus was there on the cross, he said something for the first time. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And if you're a student of the Bible, you know that Previous to this, every time Jesus addressed the Father, God, the Father, he addressed him as Father. He never addressed him as God because he addressed him as Father. Why did he say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because at the cross, Jesus had took the sin of place. He was our substitutionary sacrifice. A substitute stands in the place of another. See, we all were sinners, and when Jesus declared, my God, my God, he has stepped in our place. Ooh. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 6, the iniquity of us all has been laid on Jesus. I wish y'all get a spiritual picture. Look at it in the spirit. See it the way God see it. It was his beloved son that hung there on the cross. The Bible say he knew no sin. 
No sin was found in him, and he committed no sin. But yet at that moment, he took the sin of the world upon himself, and it, and it caused him so much agony that he cried out and said, My God, my God, why has you forsaken me? At that moment in time, the father, so to speak, has turned his back on the son. The same thing that happened to Adam the day of he ate off that tree happened to Jesus on the cross. He was separated from the father. When Jesus cried out, he had became the sacrifice for our sin. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. For us be of a substitute. On the cross, Jesus became sin. He became one with the sinner. And the Bible teaches us that when he was on the cross, not only was he a, took the sinner's place, but he also became a curse for us. Galatians 3 and 13 say he has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Can you see it right now? On the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, had become a curse with our sin. He was so cursed with our sin that he was separated from the Father. He took the curse upon himself that the blessing might come upon us. I wish I had some witnesses in here. That's why under the new covenant, no believer can ever be cursed by God because God cursed his son in your place. At the cross, when Jesus cried out, my God, he experienced death. Hebrews 2 and 9 says he tasted death for every man. Jesus experienced death for the little baby sitting over there in her mother's lap. Jesus experienced death for the elderly sister sitting over there with her beautiful hat on. Jesus experienced death for the usher back there on their post. He tasted death for every man so that every man who trusts in him can receive the gift of eternal life. Thank God for Jesus and what happened at the cross. Say he tasted death, Sister Monday. Death is a plural word in the Bible, which means Jesus died twice on the cross. The first death was spiritual death. The second death was physical death. Thank God that Jesus tasted death so that you and I, though we die, yet shall we live. I know my sister don't mind me using the illustration, but I was here on last week when we was at Dr. Barr's homecoming. And Ken, I want to tell y'all what really happened on that day, if y'all don't mind. Dr. Barr was a born-again believer. Yeah, I know he was Sunday school superintendent. He was on this board, on that board. But being a born-again believer what gets you in. All the other stuff is just fruit of his salvation. But let me tell you what literally happened. And Jesus explained it in John chapter 11. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Say, he who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. So on that morning, Dr. Barr, he had already believed. And when he died physically, he went right on to live in the Lord's presence in glory. His spirit just left his body and he entered into the gates to be absent from the body. What really happened at the cross? Jesus took the sting out of death. Oh, death, oh, death, oh, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I heard Jesus say in Revelation, he told John, my, he said, I am he who was dead, but now I'm alive. And I live forevermore. Then, Pastor, he said, I got the keys now. 
He said, I got the keys of death and hell now. That means all those who trust in me. He said, I give you eternal life. You no longer have to worry about death and hell. The one who has the keys has authority. I promise you, you can't just come to my house and walk right in. Because you ain't got no keys. My wife and my boys, they got authority. They got keys. Jesus said, I got the key now. Now, those of you who was on your way to death and hell, he said, I got the keys now. He said, now I give you eternal life. That though you die, yet shall you. Thank God for Jesus. At the cross, Jesus defeated Satan. He stripped Satan and all demonic forces of their authority over all those who trust in Christ. Colossians 2 and 15 says, he disowned principalities and powers. Somebody said, preacher, you going through all that. You ought to be listening because the devil, that's the one that's robbing, killing, and stealing from you. Christian with no joy. Christian always needs some help getting their bills paid. Watch this, Pastor. Christian who are always coming up to the altar because they need prayer. Not realizing that Satan been stripped of his authority over your life. So those who trust in Christ and know that the devil no longer has power to rule over them, they can walk in victory in every area of life. Disown. I'm one of those who like those, te those cop shows. You know, cops, snap, 48 hours, all that type of stuff. And sometimes when I'm watching the show, they talk about a suspect who is armed and dangerous. This person may have just killed somebody, and they say that that person is on the lamb, and watch this, he's armed and dangerous. Can I tell you, when Adam sinned, Satan got armed and dangerous. You can see the results, because in the next chapter, key, he calls Adam's son to kill his brother. He was armed and dangerous. He was the one who got in Pharaoh's heart and told him, kill the firstborn of all the Egyptian male sons. He was armed and dangerous. He was the same one that caused Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be thrown into the fiery furnace. He was armed and dangerous. But 2,000 years ago, on old Calvary's hill, at the cross, the suspect got disarmed. Jesus took the authority, took the power away from the devil. Look at somebody tell he's been disarmed over my life. He can't put sickness and disease on me. He can't cause me to live in poverty. He can't cause my children to be rebellious. He's been disarmed. Put your neighbor tell him, wake up, he almost done. I don't care about they getting tired and getting sleep on me. If you know your Bible, Paul was preaching and dude went to sleep and fell out the window. So if you go to sleep on Paul, you ain't gonna bother me. I'm gonna keep on preaching till I get to the end of my page. Cause somebody is hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church. Because somebody Saying, Lord, I need a word. I don't need entertainment. I don't need the choir to sing. What I need right now. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word. The grass will and the flower fell, but his word abides. So shall my word be to go forth from my mouth. It shall not return. So what really happened at the cross? John 19 and 30, Jesus said, it is finished. The most powerful three words 
that's ever been spoken into humanity. It is finished means paid in full. When Jesus said it is finished, he was saying that the sin debt that you and I owed has been paid for. Thank God that it is finished. Hallelujah. We owed a debt that we could never pay for. Jesus paid a debt that he didn't owe. Do you realize that Christianity, which is really not a religion, but I'm going to use it in religion terms, Christianity is the only religion, so to speak, in the world that has a savior. Christianity, somebody should say it again, they want to hear. Christianity is the only religion in the world that has a savior. You know why? Because every other religion tell man what he got to do to be his own savior. Every other religion, whether it's Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Muslim, New World, whatever it is, it tell man what he must do to be his own savior. But when Jesus said it is finished, he was letting us know our sin debt is paid. That's why it's only one way to God, because no man can pay for his own sin based on what he or she does. It was the cross when Jesus died for our sin. He paid the price. And all of you who trust in him, God says, you have the gift of eternal life. Jesus said, I'm the way. The truth is the life. No man comes to the Father except through. You got to go through Jesus. Watch this. Not only do we, we can't come to the Father except through him. Watch this. You can't receive no other blessing except through him. If I was in Bible country, which I am, I would tell you Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I tell people all the time, God ain't, God ain't, God ain't blessed me with anything because I was good. I know some of y'all still think that. Well, I'm being obedient. I'm being good. That woman with the issue of blood was here. She would tell you that he blessed her because he was good, not she good. If Mary Magdalene was here, he would tell you, she would tell you that he cast seven demons out of me. Not because I was good, but because he was good. Every blessing that I receive from the Lord God is a gift of grace through Christ Jesus. When Jesus said it was finished, watch this, he didn't make a down payment and didn't expect me to pay the rest of the payments. See, when you go purchase a vehicle on time, Old folks used to call it on time. That means on credit for y'all young cats. When you go purchase a vehicle on credit, many times they will require you to put a down payment. And a down payment means that there are other payments in the future to pay. But Jesus said, when he paid for our sin, it was finished. It ain't nothing else you and I could pay for. We can't add to it, and we can't take a... So yes, I'm saved. Don't do a lot of the things I used to do. But me not going to the club no more, not getting high no more and all that don't make me saved. I'm trying to help somebody. The wisdom of God teaches me to do better, but the grace of God saved me. 
For by grace are you saved. Through faith that not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should. It happened at the cross. At the cross when Jesus said it was finished, it was not a cry of defeat from a dying man, but a cry of triumph from a life-giving redeemer. Thank God for Jesus. It was a public announcement that the work of our redemption had been fully, finally, and forever accomplished. Forever accomplished. Thank God for Jesus. That's, that's what happened at the cross. He, he took away our sin. He redeemed us. He reconciled us. We have the remission of our sin through him. And not only that, through his resurrection, guess what, if, guess what the resurrection means? The resurrection of Jesus Christ, watch this, is the divine proof that his death on the cross paid in full the penalties for our sins and that justice is satisfied. It's the divine proof. It's God's stamp of approval that what Jesus did at the cross had paid for our sin and accomplished our salvation. Woo! Thank God. That's why I don't need a lot for me to praise God. Because I know the truth. So, it's the divine proof. So my wife and I, we go to a restaurant, like most of us do. They bring me out the check. The check said, this is what you owe. Right? So I reach in my pocket and get them my debit card. They go back and do their thing, and they bring me back a receipt. And the receipt is proof that the meal we just ate is paid for. The resurrection is the proof that our sin has been paid for. I wish I had time to teach, Mike. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it said, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then we are still guilty of our sin. Thank God for the resurrection, for the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He accomplished everything for you all, everything for me. That's why we can have joy in the midst of sorrow, peace in the time of trouble. Because we know through our Lord Jesus Christ, he has defeated all of our enemies. I'm telling you, we're not fighting for victory, we're fighting from victory. I'm telling you, if you're in Christ, you're more than a conqueror. I'm telling you, if you're in Christ, you're an overcomer. I'm telling you, if you're in Christ, you are blessed and highly favored. You are deeply loved. You are a child of God. You have eternal life. You have forgiveness. You have redemption. Finally, at the cross, what really happened, Brother Williams, at the cross? According to Romans 5 and 8, at the cross, it was the greatest demonstration of God's love for us. The Bible said, for God demonstrated his love for us, that while we was yet sinners, Christ died at the cross. Every time I think of the cross, every time I look at the cross, it is a powerful symbol just how much God loved me. God gave his only begotten son so that if I believe in him, I will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Whenever we think about the Father, whatever we may be going through, when we look at the cross, that is a full display and exhibition of just how much God loves you. He said, while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. He demonstrated his love for you. Look at this. Don't ever judge, determine God's love for you by what you're going through. Because the truth is, Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. He said, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So being a Christian doesn't exempt me from going through troubles, trials, and tribulations. But I'm not going to judge God's love for me by what I'm going through. 
All I have to do is look back to that old rugged cross. That old rugged cross tells me just how much God loves me. He loved me so much that his son died for me. He died in my place so that I could have the right to the tree of life. And I stopped by to tell you this morning, you may be going through something, you may be done, done the most awful thing in life, but I want you to know God loves you just where you are. And God loves you so much, it ain't nothing you can do about it. The Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Look at your neighbor and just put a face with it and say nothing. nothing. Talking about nothing. My issue, nothing. My bad habits, I still have nothing. Them words that slip out sometimes, nothing. Nothing could separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. What really happened at the cross? Now you know. Oh, we ought to give God praise right there. Amen. If you can't thank God for the cross, you've got a serious problem. All this other stuff don't mean nothing. <laughs> you mean to tell me you can praise God for a car, a job, a raise, and everything else, but you can't thank God that one Friday evening, he hung, bled, and died. Oh, but he got the receipt from the grave. <laughs> Oh, we thank God for everything, everything but the cross. You know, what amazes me in church, we'll shout over a prophecy, a prophetic word. You know, we, we'll shout over all this stuff. I got a degree, got a job, got some money, got a spouse. And all this stuff you down here shouting about, it's going to burn up and die anyway when you leave here. But the one thing that will never change is what he did on the cross. And we, we give God a pray, a ordinary praise for that extraordinary thing. But the cross is the whole reason you can make it to heaven. Let me tell you something. You're going to spend more time on that side than you're going to spend on this side. You're going to spend more time over there now than you're going to spend over here. And I'm telling you, I say this all the time, that there is something dangerously wrong when you arrive your destination without having made reservations. I ain't going to live in hell, then die and go to hell. Andre, that's just too much hell for me. If you're here today, I ain't finna ask you if you need special prayer because the enemy has been disarmed. <laughs> I ain't finna ask you, I, I, listen, I'm finna ask you, do you know Jesus? And do he know you? Have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? See, so I mean, Lord and Savior. Have you accepted him? I ain't talking about do you go to church. I ain't ask you, do your grandmama and them go to church. I'm asking you, do you know Jesus? You can go to church. You can go to hell from church. But do you know Jesus? If you're watching online, if you're here with us today, listen, this is not about joining Bethlehem. This is not about joining love and faith. This is about joining the body of Christ. If, ain't one, if neither one of these churches work for you, me and Pastor Andre, we'll send you where you need to be. We talking about, do you know Jesus? If you don't know him, if you don't know him, you need to get to this altar quickly. You need to get to this altar. Somebody say, well, why do we got to come to the altar? I'm ashamed. I don't want everybody to know. Well, the Bible says if you're ashamed of him before men, he'll be ashamed of you before his father. 
I ain't asking you if you think you saved, if you might be saved. I'm asking you, are you sure? Are you certain that you are saved? And if you're not, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. Everything wasn't a lie. Some stuff I did do. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my master. I confess and believe that you are the son of the living God. I confess and believe that you hung, bled, died, and rose for my sins. And by that, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, or for the first time for the real time, you are saved. And ain't nothing nobody can do about it. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Listen, you can't lose salvation. If you die and go to hell, it ain't because you used to be saved. It's because you never were in the first place. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise today all over the building. Come on, give God praise. What a word. Will you help me celebrate this preacher, Pastor Andre Williams? Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, thank you. Celebrate this great preacher. Celebrate this great preacher. One of these days, I'm going to be able to preach just like him, y'all. I'm telling you, he is somebody's preacher to me. Amen. Love and faith, let me say it again. You are richly blessed to have such a great man of God. Now, the hours are already far spent. Uh, is there anything I'm forgetting before I, before I move on? Anything I need to know before I move on? All right, good. All right, so um, thank you so much. Love and faith, thank y'all for coming to, to hang out with us today. God bless you. We love y'all so much. Now, listen, I'm going to ask everybody that we're celebrating 97 years of ministry. We're going to ask everybody uh, that can and will to sow into the life of our church uh, so into the life of our church. This is 97 years of ministry we've done. So on your way out, we want you to give, 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 give. So into our church. We ain't talking, we ain't asking you for money. We asking you to sow seeds into our church so that the going further going of God's kingdom work can be done. We believe God does great work here at the Bread House, and we want you to sow into these fertile grounds. Amen. One thing I love about Bethlehem. If we raise money to put a new door up, we're going to put a new door up. We ain't, we ain't got no building fund, and they don't ever go to the building. We don't do what we say we're going to do. Y'all seen churches like that. We don't do that. If we say we raising money for this, that's exactly what we raise it for, and that's what we do. Amen. But we, we thank God for all of you. So, listen, on your way out, and let me give you some dismissal instructions because we are still in a pandemic. When you exit this side to my left... I want you to exit the wall and go out the door and fellowship outside. Do not, do not, do not fellowship on the inside. It's not enough room for us to socially distance there. If you're on this side, we need you to exit the center aisle and go out. Now, when you leave, we want you to give on your way out. Give on your way out. If you're giving specifically towards our church for the anniversary, there's a giving envelope on Givelify entitled Project Bethlehem. That's where you want to sow for the church anniversary um, for, uh, for our 97 years of service. Now, also, listen, uh, if you are giving on ele electronically, download Givelify if you haven't already and give to our church on Givelify. What a joy it is to see your seeds uh, going into uh, this great work of God. Now, let us stand all over the building. Are there any parting words, anything I uh, need to know? All right, let us stand all over the building. Don't you ever forget what really happened at the cross. Thank you, Age to Praise. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, choir. What a magnificent job. I am so proud of y'all. Will y'all do me a favor, Bread House Choir? Keep that up. I need more of that. Amen. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forevermore. 
until we all meet again. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. You're dismissed. God loves you. So do I.